Thank you. Good morning. All right. Yeah. So this is a uh, folks. If you it's the first time you're here, and maybe it's the first time you actually sort of strolled through either Twitter or a meetup page, uh, this is Open Source Friday, and uh, it's an opportunity to talk to maintainers and learn how open source works, um, or how or learn how open source doesn't work too as well. We're we're happy to have both conversations. And um, if you are in the chat to say hello, um, definitely give us a wave. Um, tell us how you you learned about this uh, the stream. Also, if you've you've been here before, just uh, give us a shout out and say, you know, I came in for this project or I came in for this other stream. Um, but Nate, uh, do you want to give us like an introduction of who you are and what you do and uh, what project you're working on? Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, so. Uh, my name's Nate. Uh, everywhere online, I'm Bill Mabim. Um, I, I usually say my name is Bill Mabim. I, I just play an avatar called Nate uh, elsewhere. Um, but I, uh, I work for GitHub. I've worked there for almost three years. Um, and I work on GH. So GH is uh, the command line version of github.com. Excellent. And uh, <laughs> it sounds like uh, the notification was in Spanish, too, as well. I totally forgot to change that. <laughs> Uh, we had the Octo Gatos Conf, so it was a conference in Espanol. Um, so if anybody was <laughs> was uh, confused on why that was in Spanish and they didn't understand it, there you go. Um, uh, this present day is uh, uh, going to be presented in English. That was horrible, but uh, we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> Lo siento. <laughs> Lo siento. Disculpe. <laughs> um, I know I know a, a bit of Spanish, but not not great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you've actually. Um, you actually started to get up around the same time. We just learned that before we went live. Uh, and you've been working. So you haven't always been working on the CLI then. You, where were we working on before? Oh, it's super exciting. Uh, well, so before GitHub, I worked for Venmo. Uh, oh, nice. Just happened by accident, kind of. Like, I, I, I wanted three trips to New York. And I was like, well, what are the Python companies in New York? So I ended up at Venmo. Uh, but then that puts the, the taint of uh, FinTech on your resume. Yeah. Uh, and so when I was looking for a new job, uh, my, my girlfriend is actually a hopper. Um, she, and she's been here um, almost four years. Oh, cool. Uh, and I was just getting jealous. I was like, wow, that looks like a pretty sweet place to work. I've been a user of GitHub forever. And they had an opening for billing. So, um, so yeah, so you know, <laughs> thanks to the, the, the finance. The FinTech, yeah, I, I got a job uh, doing uh, working on payments, um, the like, enterprise side of payments. Um, and uh, yeah, but when you know when the CLI team got formed, I, like I, the, the second I heard about it, I was like, I, I, this is the team that I, I want to be on. Um, so yeah, I went to the the manager and just kind of showed her all of my my adventures in the terminal that I go on, and here I am now. Awesome, cool. Yeah, that's one of the programming things. The two things I don't want to do in programming: one's time zones, and the other one is billing. Um, I've had experience of both of them and I've sworn them off. So if I have to touch, you know, the Braintree API or other things, like, I'm just like, you know what, uh, I'm going to either <laughs> offload this to somebody else or like politely bow out, but, um, definitely, definitely a hard problem. And I totally get the whole, um, <laughs> tainting your resume with the, with the finance, a uh, FinTech, uh, definitely a thing you get sort of, sort of like typecasting. And when it comes to like movie stars, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, You've escaped, though. You're not working on a, yeah. a nice, cool open source tool, uh, oh, which yeah. is GH. I'm a, lot, I'm a lot happier. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm curious, though. Your background uh, is in Python, then? Uh, it's yeah. It's kind of all over. Um, I, you know, I've been doing programming for uh, probably 12, 12 years or something like that. Uh, I've like I've, the bulk of my code has been Python, um, but. Uh, for jobs, it's been a been a really weird like a weird mix. I, I my career started in Perl, um, you know, so I have a big big soft spot for Perl still. Uh, I've done Clojure, Ruby, um, Java, all sorts of stuff. But yeah, outside of work, it was pretty much Python for for a long time. I had a weird like couple of years as a JavaScript person, um, and uh, now actually because of GH, I've gotten really into Go. So I've been like porting all of my side stuff into Go, and it's been a lot of fun. Nice. So you're, you're, is that your first experience, though, with Go, uh, is from uh, this project? Pretty, my first, like, you know, real experience, um, I, I had started a, a project in Go um, 
Well, I tried to learn Rust like a couple of years ago, and it went terribly. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll fail into Go. Uh, and so I was already learning it when I heard about this team. Um, but I had only done like some toy projects and really small stuff. So this is my first like you know actual project in Go. Okay, awesome. Uh, I have always been interested in Go. Um, ironically, my last job I interviewed in Go, uh, but when I got there, I wrote only JavaScript. Um, so it's a, <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it's a story I tell all the time. But yeah, that's my. I've always like been tangential to Go projects. So when I saw the CLI was written in Go, and I was using it for my own streams, I used the CLI. Um, had an opportunity for a feature, and then saw it was written in Go. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. I can actually. <laughs> Use the, all the knowledge I do, which I joke, I, I learn Go once a year um, just to keep up the up the speed. <laughs> I, I've been really happy with it. It's like uh, moving back, I don't know, for, for whatever reason, I found it really weirdly intuitive and the, the parts about it that were weird, I got really used to and now I really appreciate. And it's just been great. I, I'm, I'm so happy I don't have to think about virtual environments and packaging and Python versions and I didn't expect that to be one of my favorite things, but uh, it's really cool to be like, I can write a little script, compile it, and I just have that now. I don't have to like do maintenance on my little scripts, you know, which is what has kind of been happening over the years with my Python stuff. All right, so we're getting uh, some comments about the, uh, the buffering and the lagging. I just lowered the bit rate, so hopefully that sort of gives us a little more space and lowers the lag. Um, I apologize for folks who um, are not getting the best experience. Uh, perhaps they're on the Twitch is not leveraging the local AWS server for them. Um, disable low latency mode. That is something that I definitely don't know how to do. <laughs> um, but I will say the recording will be on, on YouTube. So if you cannot stick around for this um, <laughs> due to the buffering, uh, feel free to check it out on the YouTube and we'll still continue to power through. It's, uh, you know, we're doing it live. Uh, so speaking of live, I can switch to the, the share and we can actually jump into the project and talk about what we actually have been sort of alluding to, which is the, uh, the actual CLI itself. So we had a big release, uh, was it uh, last week or the week before? Oh my God, time is incredibly meaningless. Uh, two weeks ago was the big 1.0, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so do you want to give like, uh, we can give like a brief overview of like what the CLI is and like why it exists. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, th the way that I describe it is it's it's a port of GitHub. Uh, you know, like between video game consoles, kind of. It's we have it on the web and now we have it in the terminal. So it's it's more than just um, like an API wrapper. Um, I know there's a lot of there are many really cool projects um, out there that just kind of like wrap all of the, the API endpoints. Um, so this does a lot more than that. It like tries to take uh, whole entire like GitHub workflows and, and present them in an intuitive way um, and in a way that like we hope reduces context switching. Um, you don't have to like switch from your code to your browser um, as often if you're using GH is, is the hope. Um, and I don't know, just like to provide an experience that is just feels comfortable for people that like to be in the terminal and, and are already there most of their day. So what is, uh, I guess, what's the difference between this and the, uh, the regular Git CLI? So it's, they're, they're pretty different. Um, uh, you know, Git, like we, we, we intentionally don't try to replace Git ever. Um, so we call Git for you. Uh, to do things, you know, like getting commit logs, uh, pushing branches, stuff like that. So like we call it Git, but we don't ever try to replace a Git command. Um, so like GH is, is kind of a, it's, it's like a, I don't want to use the word successor because we're not trying to replace this other project, but there's an existing project called Hub uh, yeah. that is an open source project, uh, very pretty similar to GH. Uh, and it's the same person is kind of behind both uh, my coworker, Mislav, um, has been in charge of Hub, now works on GH. Um, and what he kind of learned over there is like Hub really tries to replace Git and like, you know, let you call Hub instead of Git and then it'll add a bunch of GitHub stuff to, to Git. And he just, he found that to be really difficult to maintain. And so like, you know, GH is just GitHub and Git is just Git. Uh, sometimes we might call it to Git, but we're never gonna replace Git. You're always still gonna call Git to do low level things like 
stage files, commit files, create branches, stuff like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that is that. And um, I I'm a big fan of the, the CLI too. Well, it gets, it gives a lot of like context um, for just operating with, with uh, GitHub itself, like github.com. Uh, I also use hub back in the day. So being able to like create repos from the command line without doing this sort of dance of going to the UI, creating the uh, URL or the repo, and then <laughs> I guess pushing that branch up into there. Like there's always that awkwardness of trying to teach people GitHub or yeah, just mm -hmm. teach GitHub and teach them what a repo is, open a repo and then there's nothing there. <laughs> and then they have to go, and go to this magical place, which is the terminal. So consistency, like being consistent on how you can approach teaching it uh, is helpful. Um, speaking of consistency, it looks like the lag is improved. I think the bit rate okay. might've been the fix. Um, cool. So everybody, so like might be... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Oh, I might be quiet also. I can, uh, I can yell if that's helpful. <laughs> uh, I can actually bump your, up your volume too as well, uh, which is not a problem. Um, and I can lower myself down. Yeah, hey, feedback, live feedback. This is how open source works. Uh, like what you see, I'm actually doing the mixing, I'm doing the streaming, and uh, this is all bootstrap for us. So happy to everybody's stuck around and giving us a uh, live feedback as well. Uh, but speaking of live feedback, uh, I want to actually talk about the project itself. So this is, you, you're more than welcome to, uh, GH Garden is fun. Actually, I'm not sure about that command. What is a uh, GH oh, Garden? It's, uh, it's uh, I moved it to GH Repo Garden. Um, it's also, I, I want to give the caveat. It's, a, it's an Easter egg that I added uh, to GH. Um, it's, it's broken in 1.0 for like a lot of repositories. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's fixed in trunk, so it'll be out in the next release. But uh, it's, if you run it, it'll take your repository and drop you into kind of like a, a roguelike uh, environment where you, you, the repository is rendered as a big garden. Uh, and so all the commits are flowers and there's just a couple of cute details and, uh, yeah, I, I did it. We have hack days on our team and I, I wanted to like explore being like in a repo, like what, like what if the repository was a space and like, what would that space look like? And so, yeah, that was my little attempt at that. And, uh, yeah, if you run it against the repo with enough commits should work. <laughs> I, um, for some reason my terminal was dying on me, so. I had to open up a new one, but I think I have one that I can test out. Uh, I'm just curious because uh, I've not seen that, but also I haven't been watching the uh, the commits like a hawk at all. So GH repo garden. Yeah, we'll see if it crashes. I also have not updated ah. it as well. Uh, updated my oh, version. Really? Oh really? So, oh, if you're not on 1.0, it might not be in there then. Oh no, it's there. Okay, oh, there I'm definitely on 1.0. Okay. Yeah, you're in there. Uh, so, oh man, so this is a fun bug. Um, so I'm using uh, RGB color, and yeah. if for some reason, what I, whatever I'm doing, this might have been fixed, but I, the, those letters aren't supposed to be blinking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's something to do with Mac. I, I develop on Linux like exclusively, so like I, I this kind of stuff, I have to do like some low level. Uh, uh, escape code stuff, and that's not always super consistent. And then, yeah, something about when I switched to using the RGB um, escape codes, it leads to this blinking. I don't know what the hell I did on the Mac because it doesn't do on Linux. So it, yeah. it's a lot prettier on Linux, I, 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 I think. But if you can walk around with lots, um, it should be able to. Yeah. Uh, oh. And yeah, there you oh, go. Watts. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can wander around, and then you know, it tells you what you're looking at. So every flower oh. is. Uh, Every flower is a commit, and so it tells you who made it. And then, the, so the color is just supposed to be a derivation out of the hash. Um, nice. This is my favorite committer yeah. depend the bot right there. <laughs> <laughs> it needs it needs the bots flag like you added for credits. Yeah, um, I mean everybody. I, I would say the last month is nothing but depend the bot because I've shipped zero features to my project. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's all depend the bot who's contributed. But that's pretty cool. I'm actually going to play with it, and I can get a Linux environment. Not now, but I'll do that later to, to see what the uh, what the author had in mind and envisioned. <laughs> yeah. I have a Mac somewhere in my house. I can try to fix it. <laughs> I, there's some one of the terminal emitters. I think it looks fine, and I'm not sure, or something. Maybe I'm just uh, dreaming. But um, 
Yeah, I know. Yeah, so I, that's I, I'm you know I've got two little hidden commands like that in GH, and I'm hoping to add plenty more. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll I honestly I need to actually just watch this repo because I don't mind getting the uh, notifications for this since I I am now a committer on it. Um, but I just want to talk about the sort of the approach to the project too as well. Like folks can look up all the commands and check out the documentation and how to use it. Uh, but I want to understand the approach. Um, so one. Uh, why go? Why was that the choice when like there are a lot of other tools you can use to create CLIs? Uh, and actually, let's just start with that. Like, what, what was the decision behind uh, choosing Go and Cobra? Yeah, so I mean, so I mentioned Hub. Um, and when we started this team, on day one, it wasn't like, oh, we're just going to make something new. Like, we really, like, we were, well, are we going to just maintain Hub? Are we going to maybe change Hub drastically? Are we going to make something new? We didn't really know. And we, we talked about it a lot. Uh, so when we, when we did decide, finally, for a bunch of reasons, uh, let's, let's just make something new, um, you know, Mislav had pointed out, like, well, Hub had been in Ruby for a long time. That led to some performance and packaging problems. A community member just offered a full rewrite and go. And Mislav just took it and was like pr pretty happy with the result. And so he had that positive experience. Um, I was really interested, as, from a, mainly from a packaging standpoint. Like I, I just, I we wanted this tool to be available to people in as many places as possible, and to just be able to do cross compilation and release binaries. And then we really wanted that that nice experience. And I, I have been using enough. Um, there's a bunch of nice Go commands, like uh, like Micro is a cool little editor. Yeah. Um, and some other stuff. And I love, it. again, like when you're talking about a programming language, it feels weird to talk about how great it is to release, but but I really feel that like compiling and shipping Go is a breeze. It's so nice. Uh, it's so much easier than compiling C++ and it's so much easier than packaging and shipping Ruby or Python. So that was like a really big sell. Um, and then performance, like we're trying to, to you know, tell people, hey, you should use this all day. Like you're a programmer, you're gonna be using this tool a lot if you're gonna use it. We don't want it to be slow. So we set a pretty um, a pretty high bar for ourselves in terms of what what is you know how fast it should go. I, I think some of the commands we could actually even go faster. Um, we're trying to we're fighting mostly network latency, but uh, yeah. So that was another huge reason to go with, to go with go. Nice, yeah, and like the when you say you're fighting network latency, maybe I have a nice network outside of streaming and getting buffering. But uh, like just I've done, I've used the GH for cloning forked repos and just getting the context of the repo to my command line really quickly. Uh, it seemed like very fast, uh, like faster than actual get cloning. Um, so I've been impressed so far. I, we're just calling get clone under the hood. So yeah. There's no magic there. Okay. Maybe there's no magic. I think, I, yeah. I mean, I think conceptually it feels faster because you just get to type GH repo clone. Yeah. You don't have to grab the slash, URL. You know, foo. Yeah. So, like, it, it always feels faster. But, um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, some, some of the stuff around like uh, pull request listing, um, commit log pulling, that can be a little bit slow just from networking stuff sometimes. But yeah, not so bad. Yeah, and like the the one thing that I even noticed too as well, because like um, I I think I joked on stream. I'm sure if I, I record if it was on the recording, but um, I I've always learned Go. I joke that I learned Go once a year, um, because I don't really have like an actual product project that I'm working on or like something I do at work. Um, so even doing my commit, which I think oh, you know, I I did a signee. I wanted to find my my PR because uh, I actually did a PR a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, a signy B Dougie. Okay, let's delete this. Uh, but what I was getting at is like understanding how to actually run the build locally uh, is something I always have to look up with like uh, with like JavaScript projects uh, and Node because there are very different ways to approach that problem, um, and it's just like not consistent as far as when it goes to mm -hmm. JavaScript projects. But like with Go, with the binaries built directly into the the I guess is it is it built in the standard library? I believe so. Um, it was a breeze to actually run to see my changes working like immediately once I did, I wrote the code, um, which was nice. Go with go. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm, I'm a big fan of that also. Um, yeah. And like, you know, we can talk like the language itself. There's a bunch of stuff I like about the actual language, but 
yeah, I, I'm super relieved. I, I think these days it's it's like kind of a no brainer that you you want you want to think holistically about the whole practice of programming and like a programmer's task isn't just programming. Like you have to have development environments and releasing and like yeah. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, and it's it's you know I I would say it's really worked out for us. Um, yeah, I've been 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 happy with with the development for for GH for sure. Uh, I had one question, and I want to jump into the contributing MD and talk about that a little quick. Uh, but my first question is, why is the contributing MD not in the root and it's under the .github folder? Is there a, a special reason for that? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> so I, <laughs> Somebody put it there. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, somebody at GitHub that um, is involved with uh, open source you know, making sure that we do things correctly. That's, I think that's where they put it. So uh, I, I think this appears magically somewhere in the GitHub UI, but I, I'm not actually sure. Where. Yeah, it's supposed uh, to show up here on the right, which I think if I am correct, it's not there anymore. It might be in the in the insights. There's a really cool uh, feature uh, that, in, that I like the community. Yeah, the community insights page yeah. is really cool. It might, there it is, yeah. So. This just tells you, um, yeah, it, it should, it'll link it there. So I think that we put it in the .github to uh, make it show up here. Okay. Yeah, because I know, uh, like, even my projects, I put it in the root. And when I went to contribute to this project, I was like, oh, they don't have the contributing MD. And then I found it by searching, uh, which if mm. people don't know, you can hit T uh, and on the root of the project and search, uh, which I've shown that before a couple times. Uh, you all need a pull request template. <laughs> It'd be 100% yeah. complete. We have them. I don't know why we're getting a a yellow on that. Yeah, they're in there. Be like in uh Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's so, the it's the structure. Um, maybe uh because you have you have it uh, in a folder. Anyway, <laughs> you can talk no to GitHub idea. about that. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was just I was just curious because I know I noticed actually all GitHub open source projects do it in the dot GitHub. Uh, and you're the first project I've actually talked about on stream uh, about this. Mm -hmm. uh, I figured I'd ask that question. Um, but yeah, this is the contributing MD. And this is like, so I had, I, I've been using the CLI uh, on stream. Uh, I, tw I actually stream uh, here on BWEO, uh, if you want to actually check that out. Um, but I do some open source contributions. Uh, because I use uh, GH, I want to actually make a contribution on stream. And I think, uh, uh, co-host, you were there, I think, for this contribution. You were egging me on. Um, but yeah, it was like first time that a Go contribution to a public project that was like of this size. I know it's still kind of beginning, uh, but I found a lot of context that was actually super helpful. And going back to the build, um, like even understanding how to run the, the build commands over then run and see my changes right away. Again, this is something I've done in JavaScript projects, which it's usually like a make file um, that, that you do the build with, uh, but this is actually built directly within the language, which was pretty cool. Yeah, you can use the make file too here. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, I appreciate that. But we listed it out just because like, if you're on Windows, um, yeah. you're probably not gonna have make. So yeah, we wanna make sure it's it's clear how to build if you're in, in an environment without make. Yeah, I, I understand it's like, the challenges of building a project that needs to run in the command line for multiple environments. So you have Linux, the different flavors of Linux, Mac and Windows. Uh, I just recently paired program with someone on Windows yesterday. And I was not very helpful <laughs> at all. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I was just yeah. I've I've been um, like I said. I, I work in Linux, um, but I, uh, I I recently got a Surface Book uh, laptop because I I wanted something that I could draw on and like you know play some like games on. Uh, and so now, so I've actually been experimenting with having Windows 10 be like my laptop. So I, I work on a desktop just about all day and then go to the couch on that. So I use WSL, so I'm still technically using Linux, but I've been trying to, to do more like tasks and just like the default Windows experience. And like, it's very different. It's, it's been like a big uh, learning curve for me uh, and eye opening. Like I think we could do a much better job in GH of like supporting that environment. So if you're watching and Dude, you've been using our tool on Windows. Uh, I, I apologize for any <laughs> rendering errors. We, we are aware of them. <laughs> uh, and I'm trying to learn more so I can fix them. <laughs> yeah, and what's the, I guess, what's the process for folks who want to leverage the tool and provide feedback? Like, well, how are you sort of taking feedback for from the, the millions of users? 
Yeah, well, so um, the I think we, we mentioned, like I think in the help docs or somewhere, like you can just, you can open an issue with, with the tool. I mean, if your issue isn't, it's broken. Uh, you yeah. can use it to open an issue with a feedback label and just kind of give us general feedback uh, or open a bug. Um, but otherwise, it's going, you know, just going to .com and opening an issue there. Uh, but we do everything through issues. So yeah, we've we talked, we've discussed, like, should we have, like, a, a discussions thing or I don't know. We, we haven't we haven't moved beyond issues yet. Uh, but, yeah, but as part of the 1.0 release, we added the feedback um, tag and there's a feedback template. So you can do issue create from the command line to select feedback, and then it's just kind of a general, you know, tell us what you think kind of thing. Uh, so you're just saying, can I just do gh issue create? Yeah, just do that, and then you should get the feedback as an option. Uh, oh, uh, well, you're not, you're in, yeah. yeah uh, if you do dash capital R CLI slash CLI. Well, that might be a bug, actually. I'm not sure if we pull the templates uh, for non-local repositories so if you have yeah. CLI checked out we can see but. yeah so this is this these are my templates here uh so i think yeah. it's it's actually inferring that i want to do the issue on my template um yeah you, you could do a dash capital r and then cli slash cli but i i'm not sure if it'll pick up our templates no yeah. this one's a simple title so i'd have to be in the cli repo which i think in most yeah. cases people aren't don't have the cli repo local um, but interesting right, if, right. um, folks want to provide that feedback, um, there might oh, yeah, be, a... we talked about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I know we should fix that. Yeah. And this is, uh, this is why we do these streams as well. So I actually have been ignoring chat for a bit, but, uh, yeah, um, for the, the stream that I did where I contributed to this project, it was the stream where I called you Dutch, uh, cause he's actually Belgian. So my, my apologies, <laughs> the big, very big difference. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like people are just sort of shouting out their features that they like um, with the with the CLI, which is nice. Nice to see. Yeah. So as far as the operation of the project, so you mentioned um, support is actually going through the proper GitHub support channels. So if you are having issues with like Windows and such, you should definitely go there. Uh, you can go there. That's yeah. You know, we have um, you know, we have an official GitHub support person. Um, that will kind of come to us with any issues that come in through official GitHub support. Um, but for you know, for the most part, issue, an issue is okay. Like we've we've been doing support through issues, um, like usage support in addition to like bug support. Excellent. Sorry, I'm just uh, throwing my uh, Twitch hearts in there for people saying the stream lag is gone. So it seemed like the low latency turning that off, and then also lowering the bit rate was. What did it? Which is ironic because I've definitely lowered the bit rate in the past, but um, yeah, it defaults at some high high bit rate. Um, anyway, um, yeah. So talking more about the CLI process and the and the project itself, um, sort of how do you? Well, I guess you, you just launched one point oh, so I'm not sure. I'm sure not sure how much engagement you've had um, as far as uh, feedback and interactions with the community. Are, are you getting any? outside contributors that are consistent and sort of have any ability to sort of shepherd that? Um, we've had really awesome outside contributors. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, definitely uh, Doi-T has, has done, contributed a lot in the lead up to 1.0. Um, uh, Aliabas Merchant is a uh, uh, cool dude, has been, been helping out a lot um, and has been active in like issues and PRs just kind of answering questions and stuff, which I, I know I really appreciate. Um, yeah, there's a few a few other folks that have been helping out. I think in, in like attention with this project that has has always been around and is definitely still around with 1.0, like, you know, this is this is like it is a corporate project. You know, like we're 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 a team at a company. We're paid. This is my full time job and my you know my teammates' full time job to kind of design and guide this project. So we want it to be open source because you know we want uh, people's suggestions and contributions, and, and it, they've definitely like tweaked our flow um, a number of times. But we do have like you know we make plans. Like we have you know we have like a roadmap. We have we try to keep things designed and, and consistent. And so there's some tension there. We're like a lot of the feature requests that come in, like if they don't really fit into that workflow, 
uh, somebody from the or if it is a roadmap rather, somebody from the core team has to kind of come in and be like, well, this is a great idea, but here's the direction that we were kind of going in. And we'll, we'll have a conversation about, can we capture the spirit of what you want and like incorporate it into the roadmap that we're doing? Yeah. And that it's kind of hard to have this conversation without the core team. And so I, I don't like, it's, uh, it it's it, it's can be kind of hard, hard sometimes I think to incorporate like every feature suggestion, um, but something that we want to start doing now is just publishing our roadmap. Like we would like to have a completely public, like here's what we're designing, here's what we're you know hope, here's what we're hoping to get to, um, and have that be something that people can interact with and and understand what's coming. Um, and hopefully once that exists, it'll be a, a little bit easier for the community to kind of help each other. Because right now I feel like a lot of things are just kind of stuck until one of us full-time people has can come into the issue and kind of facilitate the conversation. Yeah. Um, and you know, the roadmap's not public yet because we're tired. Uh, <laughs> we just <laughs> did 1.0 and it was a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're working on that. Like we don't have it yet. You know, we're working on that right now. Um, after I take some time off and we relax and do, bu do bug fixes and stuff for a little while, but but yeah, making it a lot easier for people to know what's coming and know how to like fit their ideas and their suggestion kind of into that overall plan is a big deal for us. Yeah, there a uh, question in the chat too as well. Um, can we leverage uh, GH as a library or is it only a CLI tool? That's a really good question. Um, so right now it's just a tool. Uh, it would be not worth it to try to use it as a library. Um, you know. What we ha we haven't talked about making it both. Um, what we have talked about is extracting uh, some of our API and authentication stuff and putting making those standalone libraries. And so, like, we just don't have the enough engineers to maintain like this as a library and as a tool. But we're hoping that we can take certain bits of it out, isolate those, and make those libraries, and then people can use that to build stuff yeah. using GitHub. Uh, so yeah, like that's. Right now, our, our org on GitHub is very empty, <laughs> uh, but we have a lot of plans for uh, filling it with the stuff that we extract out of GH. Yeah, and I, I've I've seen people. Um, <laughs> Joe says I only do good questions. People saying that's a great question. Um, I only I've seen some people actually um, embed like the the GH inside of like act actions themselves to do mm -hmm. some cool things. Uh, I've also saw pretty much out the gate when actions got shipped a couple years ago, a uh, hub getting the same sort of treatment mm -hmm. where there are like specific hub specific actions. Um, so like, what are your, what's your thought around people actually injecting that in the GitHub actions? I think it's great. Um, yeah. Like, you know, something that you mentioned earlier about like, it's great to have this in the command line because it's easier to like teach GitHub. Um, yeah. And the, Something that that made me think of is, uh, you know, GH is simultaneously for people that are like learning the command line, learning Git, learning GitHub, but it's also for people that are already super advanced and just want to script and get going. So we try to, you know, take all the things that GH uh, is supposed to do, and we try to expose it in two ways. Uh, we try to expose it in this very human-friendly, like intuitive kind of interactive mode, but every one of those workflows you can script by just invoking the command a little bit differently. So like, we don't consider either of those use cases superior. Like we want them to be on equal footing. So using GH and actions, I think is awesome. Like we, that's, and that's one of our goals for us, for ourselves internally. Cause like we use hub in our actions, yeah. you know, because for a while you couldn't do uh, release automation with GH it's in now. But so we had a goal of like, well, we want to make sure that we can use GH in all those same scenarios. Um, yeah, because like Hub is very much, it, Hub is a little bit more skewed towards like power users and automation and stuff like that. So we we want to make sure that we're we're not leaving those people behind if they want to switch and use GH. Yeah, and I, I, one use case that I saw from one of my uh, uh, friends in open source, uh, he was leveraging GH to off um, into a an environment to, because the generic GitHub token from Actions. Uh, is de definitely very limited. And I think a lot of people, when they sort of really try to become a power user of actions, they find very quickly the limitation. Mm -hmm. um, so his mm -hmm. use case was like, he just wanted to be able to have more access without doing the extra work of like 
provisioning tokens and stuff like that, um, which I think he ended up getting it um, working without auth, to be honest. But he leveraged uh, GH to basically do some of the menial work that he does to manage his project, mm -hmm. um, which was inter interesting to see. Yeah. So as far as the, um, uh, I want to go back to, because everybody was like, uh, sort of like really riled up in the, the conversation on managing open source at a, a corporate company uh, and mm -hmm. sort of like the direction of that too. Because I think that's a mm -hmm. that's a, a common thing that I'm seeing with a lot of projects, even projects we're having here uh, where folks are uh, like open sourcing a portion of their business. So like, I don't, I don't like this term open core, uh, but like, when the core of your project itself is not um, like GitHub, GitHub's not open source. Um, the actual GitHub, GitHub, uh, but a lot of pieces around GitHub are open source. So mm -hmm. that kind of feels like what this is, uh, like that term that I, I avoid using again or even mentioning again. Um, but like what that looks like for like the future of the the roadmap, and I know we we sort of touched on this a bit for like things like RSCs and like um, actually contributing this ideas to the roadmap and the mm -hmm. project. Like, do you think there's going to be like a, a space where we have like a sort of like a GitHub CLI summit or a meeting or contributor uh, engagement activity in the future? I mean, that that's the dream, right? I mean, um, I, w I would love for us to be going in that direction. I think, um, so, you know, one, one thing I'll talk about, like, like, again, we haven't, we haven't written our roadmap yet. And yeah. Um, but one of the things that, uh, you can actually, there's a PR, a, it's, it's a closed PR that you can look up, um, uh, something that Mislav worked on for one of our hack days, uh, is, is called extensions. Um, and it's a, like a pretty lightweight way to just write any program in any language and have it be, uh, it kind of injected as a GH command. Um, so if you, it'll be an older one. Um, hack. Uh, there it is. The ten thirty seven add support for command extensions. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is a really cool system. Um, we we shelved it for one point just because we were adding support for aliases, which is like a much more lightweight version of this. Uh, but this is something that we've talked about coming back to. Um, and this would allow any contributor to extend GH in like pretty complex ways and create kind of their own GH experiences and. This is kind of we've been talking about this as a as a as a path towards that like greater community involvement where people can, um, you know, they can basically propose pretty significant changes to GH and say, and here it is, and people can use it today, and then we on core can say like, that's awesome. Do you want to get it into the mainline or like you yeah know, stuff like that? So that's that's one route I think. Um, but you know, I, I, in terms of like the overall. Uh, overall structure of it like yeah i mean we are like we're this like open source edge uh, on a very big graph of of most you know a lot of closed source stuff uh and you know there, there's some there is some contention there um and it, it, i don't know I, I think that my hope is that the work that we're doing uh around like command line user experience is something that is inspiring even beyond this tool. And like, yeah. and my hope is that some of the stuff that we extract can be useful even outside of GH. And so um, I do like, I, I still think of GH as like a very, um, GH is, itself feels like a pretty, mostly traditional open source project, just with the exception of the, the kind of roadmap, the core roadmap. Because um, there's no part of GH that's off limits to suggestions or um, you know, future changes. Yeah, I mean, I like this idea too, as well as around the extensions and like whatever it looks like when it it, it gets shipped or opens up as a part of the roadmap. Uh, because I uh, like integrations is something that it's it'd be nice to be able to say GH extends or extend uh, like depend the bot. Like if you wanted to mm -hmm. actually enable that and then get interactions with the the CI. That's what one of the things I feel like that I think the mobile app is actually working on. Uh, hopefully soon, uh, but like I, I build a lot of actions, so like I want to see my actions logs, uh, but I also want to I want to see the logs for things like my Netlify deployments. Um, so like being able to have that sort of like closer interaction to some of the integrations that happen that through through GitHub would be an interesting like uh, direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean right now you can already 
do this with um, with the aliases. And like I've been I've been writing a little suite of uh, of commands using aliases to do open source uh, triage. Um, and so I, I use the API to, to ask things like, um, show me all the issues that either have no comments or no comments from like a staff member so that I know like what haven't we acknowledged yet that's come in or show me everything that has the bug label but not a priority label, like one of the three priority labels. And so um, I've been extending GH a lot with aliases and that's, you know, it's simultaneously like super useful, but also kind of limiting because like using the GraphQL API and like a one liner, it gets like, it's like 300 characters long. And so I yeah. think like extending GH is fun and really useful and a great way to, to kind of contribute from outside. And I think the extensions will just make that even, even better and even more, more cool and fun. Cool. Uh, I was going to ask a question. Um, are you currently working on anything right now? Do you have like an open PR that you, anything of interest that we, that you might want to share? I, no, I've actually barely programmed in, oh, in the, like nice. two weeks. I not. I mean, Good. it's just we've had so many issues yeah. coming in, and we have a first responder rotation. So somebody, it's each week one of the engineers, um, and there's three of us now. It was two for a while. Uh, we just got a third engineer, uh, Sam. If you see him around the repo, he's he's very very nice, um, and. So yeah, so one of us is is on is on call basically, uh, and so I I just happened to get this week, um, and so I've been doing all issue triage, um, just responding to people, prioritizing things, helping people debug issues, um, and then also trying to clean up our issues. So I've been doing like these big audits of everything that's open, nice. is this still valid? You know, just trying to prune the the you know all the stuff that we accumulated during the beta. So yeah, I haven't done any coding and you know, I feel I'm getting like, like, you know, nervous. Like yes, yesterday I, I, I or two days ago, rather, I, I think I processed over a hundred bugs in a few hours and I, I kept starting to fix things. So I was like, oh, I would just rather be programming, I think. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so not for me. I think there is uh, there, there's some open stuff from me slot that I know I need to review today. Okay, cool. Well, I, I mean, honestly, I appreciate your, your response and answer because I think Self-care, especially in the open source world, um, is should be more of a common thing, uh, being able to take vacation. There was actually a tweet um, a couple weeks ago of a maintainer who wanted to be able to go on vacation. So he actually uh, opened up an issue and then tweeted it out and shared it with his community saying, please don't open any issues mm -hmm. <laughs> during this week. Mm -hmm. um, it ended up being not, it ended up not working. Um, but we just instituted a uh, feature t uh, yesterday um, in response to uh, Hacktoberfest directly, but um, actually, not, we were actually working on this feature already. But anyway, the it's be able to limit interactions, so you actually limit interactions to only maintainers. Uh, so if you happen to want to go into a vacation mode, uh, that's a pretty mm -hmm. cool feature. So everybody who doesn't already like follow the GitHub change log, um, you can read more about that here. Um, so like, take it out of the context of Hacktoberfest, just generally as. Um, being able to um, uh, limit those interactions, that's this is how you would do it. So I highly recommend that. Yeah, I, this feature is awesome. Uh, I was really excited to see it happen. Um, yeah, I, you know, like I put GitHub on my phone um, and I could definitely feel myself uh, responding to issues more and more when I was out of the house and at night and it just it, cre it creeped up on me. I don't know if it's like that for other people, but I didn't at any point be like, I'm gonna work extra. Uh, but it was just hard, you know, because I knew that the next day, well, there's gonna be some more issues coming in. So you know, the more issues I talk or respond to now, maybe I'll have more time for programming. And so it's eventually you burn out on that. So, um, you know, I, I was really thankful for that. I'm, I'm about to take, you know, two weeks off of work and, um, I, I'm definitely going to be putting myself in that vacation mode uh, for those two weeks. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm really thrilled that that, that got got in. Nice. Yeah, I'm just looking at some of the open PRs too as well uh, to be able to. Um, yeah, it looks like there's some like GHE stuff, so some enterprise stuff to make that work. Um, oh, I didn't even think about using Gist in the context of the CLI as well. Yeah, that was something um, that 
we we wanted just support forever, but we just like couldn't justify the prioritization. And that was something that a community member just was like, I added a just command, uh, and I was really thankful for that. So like uh, this was during the beta, we got just create um, was provided to us by a community member. And we kept talking again, like, this is awesome. We want even more gists, uh, but we just didn't really have time. Um, yeah. But we managed to get done all of our all of our wants, like all of our big desires for 1.0. And I just, I, uh, I you know, I don't want to promote this behavior. So don't do this. But I spent a weekend, I went to the bar, I just Balmer peaked and I wrote a bunch more gists. So there's some bugs with the gist commands, I'm sorry, uh, but you can now list them and you can edit them interactively from the command line. Um, and so, yeah, it's, you can do um, a bunch of things with gists now. The, the, we, we, don't have a, we don't have deletion yet. Uh, editing could be better, um, but yeah, you can do stuff with gists and I, I really like it. I, um, I know, I mean, you, you, you saw it um, the other week, but we did an internal Internal. I did an internal demo for this, and I did all my uh, all my slides were just uh, gists that I was rendering with GH and use aliases to move between them, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. And there was a was a question. Uh, someone came in about making val uh, quality and valuable contributions, and I think the answer you just kind of mentioned it uh, in passing in your last response. But I think using the CLI is probably the best way to make a quality contribution. Um, I, and I think using the things that you, you want to contribute to is much better than sort of blindly looking for bugs um, because you could actually, you'll probably run into those bugs and you'll see the issue there and you need to have a use case to then sort of test your way to actually make a contribution. So uh, my recommendation is use the CLI. Uh, it sounds like GIST, there's some opportunity there in mm -hmm. the, the way GIST work uh, to leverage that. Uh, maybe make a presentation using only GIST and see how that sort of works for you. And if it doesn't work for you, uh, come back with feedback uh, with what how it sort of worked with you. Um, but yeah, did you have anything to add to that, Nate? I think that's a great suggestion. Um, and I mean, yeah, like I, 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 I use GH. I try to use it as much as possible all day, and that's that's like we all do on the team. We all use it. Um, and yeah, that's that's the best way to to figure out where like you could. In using it, you could find some little paper cut that's really easy to fix. But because you've been using it, you know it's going to feel really good to have that merged. And we love those kinds of contributions. Um, but alternatively, like uh, I, we've been trying to get better at using a help wanted label. Um, so one of my tasks for this week, I'm hoping to get to, is just kind of we don't want any enhancement issue that doesn't either have a help wanted label or a core label. So we're we're using core to signify like. You know, we want to work on this internally because not like privately, but just like we have a lot of this is like this is maybe involves a bunch of refactoring or involves a lot of design decisions. We'd like to do it ourselves. So that's a core issue. And then everything else should be a help wanted issue. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the contributions that we get are like out of the blue PRs for things that weren't labeled help wanted, maybe st like had open questions about how it should work. And it's like we it's really hard for us to accept that kind of work. You know, like we, we're not really ready for it. Um, we weren't even really sure what direction that work should go in. So definitely like just looking for that help wanted label is a really good first step. And we're going to be helping out by marking way more stuff help wanted to make that easier. Um, yeah. And then finally, just like checking to see if anybody else is working on it. Cause I, you know, we've had a couple instances where, you know, contributors, two or three people all want to do the same thing. And we've actually on the same day gotten PRs for the exact same. Goal. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. And, and um, again, like I feel, I, I, I really feel bad whenever we have to, <laughs> yeah. you know, cl close the PR. Like I yeah. feel really guilty. Like it hurts me inside. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, so just definitely to say like, I want to work on this uh, and put a comment on it, uh, on the issue saying that, um, and uh, that way other community members can, can see that and, 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 they might collaborate with you and that maybe that'll be fun. Um, but at the very least you won't be like stepping on each other's toes. Yeah. So I actually, same reason, uh, I've had some low like underhanded pitches for my, uh, my contribution or my good first issues where I'll get the same thing. Uh, so I created this GitHub action to take action, uh, which is essentially, um, one of the limitations for assigning yourself to an issue is that you have to be in the org or you have to be mm -hmm. an outside contributor. So mm -hmm. I created an action. So someone just writes the, the word dot take um, onto the issue. And then that way, whoever comments first, like that's who I expect to, to sort mm -hmm. of 
chip the PR. And if you aren't, I politely ask you to like, please, you know, let the other person have the time to, to fix it. Um, because they did go in and say like, I would like to fix this. And like the more, majority that where that happens are my good first issues, uh, where people sort of like, they, I don't know, like the race error errors or whatever race conditions, um, of everybody sort of jumping on the same thing. That's kind of really easy to do that I leave as like, I guess as open source maintainer, if you leave the bread com- crumbs in our project, like, yeah, this would be great to work on. Uh, but like, I'm going to work on something that probably is going to be a core issue, a- as you mentioned, um, and leave this open up for other people to work on, which it sounds like mm-hmm. going back to your, your example of like having the gist things work, but like, I could see that not being a priority, um, just for the overall project, even for like future releases. Um, yeah. This is really cool. Yeah. I, I, we have that, that, that exact same problem where like, I mean, for, I felt like such a jerk for a while. I was like, um, asking people to add me as a reviewer and everything. And they're like, we, we can't, <laughs> you can't yeah. add, you can't assign, you can't add a reviewer unless you're in the org and like, yeah. Yeah. So that's that for right now, it's just manual. Like I, I just try to check, I go through all my notifications and if somebody says, I want to take this, I manually assign them. And so like, this is really cool tooling. I, yeah. yeah. And it's, would... it's this amount of bash code, um, to make nice. that work. Well, this is pretty much all the work. Like this could be the, uh, use the GH client if I wanted to, but this is something <laughs> I, I talked to a maintainer about like as, as their issue they had. Um, so I've had this, this bash code sitting around for the longest time to make it work. Uh, and it's the beauty of actions is actually to shove it into a, uh, at this point now it's a, well, I don't know how many people know about the composite runs, um, inside baseball. I'm going to actually have a YouTube video about this, uh, in the future. Uh, but you don't actually have to even do a doc, Docker, Docker container anymore. You can just shove the bash code mm-hmm. into the action.yaml similar to GitHub script. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of it as if everybody knows what I'm talking about all these terms as if you follow me on the internet, but, um, yeah. BWO, search that on YouTube. Uh, you'll you'll see the video, and I'll explain that more in detail uh, in the future. Um, but yeah, we're sort I, of. I, I don't I, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> yeah, have you? Do you, I I mean it's funny because I talked to a lot of hubbers uh, at GitHub, and like there are a lot of blind spots. Like this, like if you just use it this way or use the GitHub this way, uh, you might not even use like you might not even be using actions to be quite honest. Like, which is um, pretty common internally because like. I don't know how much actually not a lot of actions on GitHub GitHub, um, mainly just CI stuff. I yeah I learned it for GH uh, and I've I've gotten pretty into it. I think it's uh, it is actually really useful. I I'm like um, uh, very I I don't like in a purely technological sense I would describe myself as conservative. Uh, in that like new stuff is like, Ooh, I don't know. I have all the things that I know. Uh, and I like those things. And I, I really like old ideas and, and dusting them off and seeing if they're useful. And like, just in general, I just kind of intentionally don't look at new things. So yeah. even as a hover, like actions, I'm sure that somebody's excited about that. I'm not going to pay attention. Uh, and I didn't, and then, you know, but it, because of GH, uh, I needed to learn it for doing like release automation. Yeah, and now I'm, I'm on board. It's a, it's a good thing. Uh, you know, I don't I don't reject new things. I just kind of put off learning them until I have to. Uh, and I don't I don't assume new things are good because uh, they're usually not. Is a lesson I've learned in my career. Uh, yeah. You know, usually somebody is lying to you. So, but actions, not a lie. I think they're actually really awesome. So yeah, I'm really happy to. There was a lot them. of there was definitely a lot of pain in actions up front. You know, we had we changed the entire API and how it works uh, between 1.0 and 2.0. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people sort of got burnt yeah. out from that. Um, but I think the payoff of, of, of actually, you know, even waiting for actions to even like be developed and have like really cool hooks into your code base and stuff like that. Um, it's wonderful. And, uh, as you bring up the, uh, uh, feeling pain and the, the pain point, uh, I actually wanted to show how I, I, I mentioned this in the video I created, but the way I was able to run test, uh, for the CLI was actually through code spaces which I'm going to have to use the, uh, the staff mm. staff bar to get this, but um, everybody don't pay attention to the, the black bar at top. Um, <laughs> yeah, for whatever reason, Code Spaces has to, the way I have access to it, it has to have the staff bar, which I'm not. I have to clear the cache. All right, one sec. All right. Come on, Code Spaces. I believe in you. There we go. 
Yeah, so the way I, I ended up running tests, because I had a, I actually had an older version of the CLI, or sorry, of Go, mm -hmm. locally. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the cool thing about this is, because I'm not really, uh, oh, sounds like the Beth rings up again, but um, I'm not a regular user of Go, so I had like a version that was like three versions old, um, but I was able to just throw up a code space and then have that run, and then the tests were running. So I don't have to actually show this, but you all can watch the video. Um, and speaking of which, we're actually winding down anyway, and since the buffering is like back up again, uh, I want to thank you, Nate, for chatting about the, C uh, the CLI, the, the GH. Uh, now everybody's got questions about the staff bar at this point. I, I, I always am shy of showing that, and I make sure it's off. Um, but anyway, uh, you can ask me more questions and some DMs. Uh, I'll give you very much no answers because I don't know much about it myself. I just know. I know that sometimes features can show up in the, the way people write branches, and I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to share future things. Um, but yeah, Nate, where can people find you on the internet? And um, yeah, we'll end with that. Uh, I'm, I, I'm a reluctant user of Twitter, I guess. I don't use it very much, but I'm Nate underscore Smith there because I made it back in 2007 before uh, I switched to Vilma Vim. Uh, and then um, I, I run a community on a Linux server uh, that's called tilde.town. Uh, so it has, I have a website there. That's kind of my... My, my home on the web. So uh, tilde.town slash tilde character uh, Velma Bim. And I don't know, it's a bunch of writing and dreams and rambling and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, those, and then I'm, I'm on Twitch also. Uh, I very intermittently stream. Uh, I like to stream weird stuff. Sometimes I do programming, sometimes I do noise music. And yeah, just whatever I feel like doing. Excellent. And uh, everybody else can find me at BWO. Follow the channel for updates and notifications. And uh, we will have a future streams coming up. We'll have, um, uh, I think in the future, we do have Gatsby coming on to talk about their project and their documentation and how they're working on that. Uh, I think we'll have Create React App as well as another project coming up in a couple weeks. And then um, actually a lot of front end projects actually. Um, so if you like JavaScript, uh, definitely come by on Open Source Fridays for every Friday, either APAC time or US time. So with that being said, uh, see ya. Cool. Thanks so much.